This is a dodo. Most people have been taught that these birds went extinct because they were physically and mentally slow, but if you believe that, you've been misled. The real reason for their extinction is much more connected to evolution and the unique history of Mauritius Island. To understand how the dodo arrived on the island and why it evolved the way it did, we need to go back in time about 140 million years ago during the Jurassic period. At that time, the supercontinent Gondwana began to fracture, and parts of its landmass slowly drifted apart. One of these landmasses was the continental block that would eventually split into Madagascar and India. This separation process wasn't instant. India began a long journey northward at a relatively fast rate, geologically speaking, of about 16 centimeters per year. While this might seem incredibly slow, in geological terms, it's an impressive pace that, over millions of years, led to India crashing into Asia and forming the Himalayas. During this process of continental drift, the region known as the Plateau emerged from the ocean. This submerged plateau gave rise to a series of volcanic islands, which eventually cooled and rose above sea level, forming what we now know as the Mascarene Islands, which include Mauritius, Réunion, and Rodriguez. At first, these islands were nothing more than bare rocks, but over time, they were colonized by plants that arrived carried by the wind, ocean currents, and even birds that brought seeds in their feathers or droppings. In a short period, these islands transformed from barren wastelands into lush, tropical paradises covered in dense forests and diverse vegetation. But the fauna took a little longer to arrive. Unlike plants, land animals had no easy way to cross the over 1,000 kilometers of ocean separating the Mascarene Islands from the nearest continent. Only a few species were able to reach this remote place, and the first to do so were birds. Thanks to their ability to fly, they could travel long distances, glide over the ocean, and eventually land on these deserted islands. Around 4 million years ago, a group of birds, ancient ancestors of what we now call pigeons, accidentally arrived on the island of Mauritius. Imagine a small flock of birds, tired after a long journey over the ocean, landing in a place where there were no predators chasing them. What these birds found was a true paradise, a place full of fruit trees and abundant seeds and nuts, and most importantly, an environment completely free of threats. There were no carnivorous mammals, giant snakes, or predatory birds to pose a danger to them. Seizing this opportunity, the birds settled on the island. But this is where evolution began to work its magic. Over millions of years, the unique conditions of Mauritius led to a phenomenon known as island gigantism. On continental environments, small animals tend to remain small to escape predators and conserve energy. However, on isolated islands without natural predators, the situation changes completely. Here, animals have the freedom to grow larger and adapt in unusual ways as the selective pressure to stay small and agile decreases. The dodo's ancestors, which were initially the size of a common pigeon and had sharp beaks for catching insects, began to evolve to make the most of the abundant resources on the island. With plenty of resources and no competition, their bodies grew more robust and their beaks turned into powerful tools for eating the largest, toughest fruits. Gradually, these birds grew to nearly a meter in height and a considerable weight, becoming the flightless birds we now associate with the dodo. The birds that arrived on Mauritius millions of years ago were not the dodos we know today. They were small relatives of pigeons, agile flying birds that measured only about 20 to 30 centimeters in height and weighed no more than 200 to 300 grams. These early birds were expert insect hunters and seed gatherers with lightweight bodies and sharp beaks designed for their varied diet and active lifestyle. However, everything changed dramatically once they settled in the unique environment of Mauritius Island. Are you enjoying what you're watching? If so, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me keep creating content like this for you. It costs you nothing, and it motivates me a lot to keep making more videos. So if you want to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Over the course of millions of years, these birds grew significantly in both size and weight. They left behind their small, slender forms growing from the initial 30 centimeters to nearly a meter in height as adults. As for weight, these birds went from being light, weighing only a few hundred grams, to becoming robust animals, weighing between 10 to 23 kilograms. This impressive transformation in size made them the second largest land animal on Mauritius Island.
surpassed only by the enormous giant tortoises that also inhabited the island. This evolution also affected their anatomy. Their beaks, which were originally small and sharp for catching insects, transformed into large curved structures, almost like claws, designed to crush large, tough fruits. But this evolution didn't just change their size. Without facing the threat of predators, the dodos lost the need to fly. Over time, their wings shrank to become small, vestigial appendages. With no need to flee, the dodos also lost their fight-or-flight instincts, becoming extremely trusting and carefree. They lived in a stress-free environment where food was abundant and danger non-existent. Now let me introduce you to one of these evolved dodos, whom we'll call Eduardo. Eduardo is the typical adult dodo who, due to generations of food abundance and the total absence of threats in his environment, grew not only in size, but also in weight, developing a solid, rounded body. As he gained weight, his wings, once strong and useful for flight, drastically reduced in size until they became useless appendages for lifting off the ground. Eduardo lived in a state of perpetual tranquility. You could approach him with a strange object, make loud noises, or try to scare him, and he would keep pecking at the fruit at his feet as if nothing had happened. Eduardo's peaceful life drastically changed with the arrival of humans. The first European settlers who arrived on Mauritius in the 17th century not only brought axes and saws with them, but also a series of domestic animals that would unleash havoc on the unsuspecting dodos. Dogs, cats, rats, and monkeys were introduced to the island, and all these animals quickly became natural predators of the dodos. Eduardo and his fellow dodos, who had never had to worry about defending themselves, became easy prey. Rats, for example, had an insatiable appetite for dodo eggs, which were large and often left unprotected in simple ground nests. With no effective defense, the eggs were eaten before they could be incubated, leading to a drastic decline in the population of new dodos, essentially resulting in what could be called a spawn kill. Meanwhile, dogs and cats hunted adult dodos who, with no ability to fly or escape instincts, were easily captured. Eduardo, who had lived in a threat-free environment for generations, now found himself completely defenseless. But the threat didn't only come from these new animal predators. The human settlers began to massively cut down the island's forests for wood, destroying the natural habitat that provided food and shelter for the dodos. Before Eduardo and his species realized it, the vegetation that sustained them had vanished, leaving them exposed in a barren and hostile landscape. In less than a century, the dodos, who had evolved to thrive in a paradise without dangers, were driven to extinction due to the rapid and brutal transformation of their environment. The arrival of humans and their invasive animals was a blow they never recovered from. Thus, what began as a fascinating example of how life can adapt to thrive in unique conditions ended in a tragic lesson about the fragility of survival. The dodos went from being carefree kings of an island without predators to becoming victims of a change they could neither foresee nor confront. The arrival of the Europeans marked the beginning of the end for the dodo, but the story is much more complex than we might imagine. Although the Dutch are often considered the main culprits in the dodo's disappearance, they weren't the first to set foot on Mauritius. Long before European settlers arrived on the island, it is likely that Arab navigators and Portuguese explorers had already visited this remote part of the Indian Ocean. However, these early visitors left barely a trace on the ecosystem. It wasn't until the Dutch decided to settle permanently that the island's fragile balance was devastated. When the Dutch arrived on Mauritius in 1598, they saw potential on the island that other explorers had overlooked. Initially, the island didn't seem to offer much in terms of obvious riches like gold or spices, but the Dutch soon noticed the vast natural resources that could be exploited. The island was densely covered with hardwood forests, such as ebony, which was extremely valuable in Europe for making luxury furniture and other high-demand items. However, exploiting these natural resources came at a devastating cost to the local environment. Imagine for a moment being one of these dodos, now much larger and heavier than your distant ancestors, peacefully enjoying a fruit feast under the shade of a tree that would soon be felled. Suddenly, you turn around and find yourself face to face with a hungry dog, or worse, a swarm of rats that have found your nest. Without the ability to fly for escape or the flight instincts your ancestors once had, you simply freeze 
unable to comprehend the danger lurking around you. As the settlers became more firmly established on the island, they began importing more animals, such as pigs and goats, that directly competed with the dodos for food resources. These new herbivorous species devoured the vegetation and fruits that had been the staple of the dodo's diet, leaving even less food for these already stressed birds. Additionally, forest fires intentionally started by the settlers to clear land for agriculture further destroyed the dodo's natural habitat, pushing them to the brink of extinction. For the Dutch, the dodos were little more than a curiosity. At first, they were seen as an easy source of meat, although it soon became apparent that their flesh was tough and not particularly tasty. Still, some accounts suggest that settlers hunted them for sport, or simply for fun, as the dodos, with no fear of humans, were incredibly easy to catch. Just imagine the scene, a bored sailor on a hot afternoon with a stick in hand, approaching a dodo that doesn't even bother to move, simply pecking the ground in search of seeds, oblivious to its imminent fate. The last confirmed sighting of a dodo was in 1662, although some individuals are believed to have survived in more remote regions of the island for a time before completely disappearing. It's tempting to imagine what might have happened if humans hadn't interfered. Perhaps today the dodo would be a living curiosity, raised on farms or even domesticated. Maybe we could see them in zoos or nature parks, coexisting with other species that once shared their home on Mauritius Island. But the reality is, we'll never know. The extinction of the dodo wasn't just a tragedy for this particular species, but a reflection of humanity's immense destructive capacity when we fail to understand or respect the ecosystems we encounter.